San Jose Sharks prospect Reese LeBach joins the show today where we talk about his trade to Omaha, uh, flipping his commitment to Penn State, and his amazing in and out burger order. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, uh, proudly a part of the Locked on Network, where we cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everydayer, all you got to do is just follow along or subscribe wherever you get podcasts, or you can watch on YouTube as well. Uh, we have Sharks prospect Reese LeBach joins. Um, again, kind of talk about, you know, the year that was for him, especially since his draft, um, kind of, you know, leading up to the draft, what his draft day was like. Um, and then, you know, he had a big year being traded in the USHL and then also flipping his commitment um, to Penn State and kind of the, the reasoning and the decision behind that. So I mean, talk about, you know, him going to Penn State and get to know Reese off the ice a little bit as well. So before we do get into it with Reese, do need to let you know that today's episode is brought to you guys by Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account. Use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And now we bring on San Jose native and Sharks prospect Reese LeBlanc. Reese, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for coming on. And um, I know things are pretty exciting for you right now. We we've got an. A, uh, you know, going to be starting at Penn State, but I think we have to really start at the very beginning. And the first question I have to ask is, when did you realize, like, hey, I'm actually kind of good at this hockey thing? <laughs> um, I don't know. To be honest, I grew up playing in San Jose my whole life, so um, definitely not the uh, not a hockey hotspot. So it took a little bit for me to work through it and get to where I am now. But to be, answer your question, I'm not totally sure when I realized I had a potentially have some sort of future in this um mm. but i think it's all just hard work and the love for the sport that got me to this point so of course you were a seventh round draft pick uh last year by the sharks um what was your draft day like i mean did you kind of expect maybe i might get drafted did you have any expectations who or what were you just like if somebody i get a phone call that like great yeah um i didn't play junior hockey last year or the year before i guess my draft year mm -hmm. um so I knew there was a chance, um, but I wasn't really expecting anything. Um, I kind of went into the day like, we'll just see what happens. Um, if I am drafted, great. If not, that's kind of to be expected coming out of youth hockey. But um, no, it was a it was a good day, great day for me and my family. We were uh, super excited and super thankful for the opportunity to be drafted by the Sharks. Were you like trying to keep busy all day or were you just like kind of like the rest of us just watching the TV and just looking at the ticker waiting for it to go by? Um, yeah, to be honest, I don't really remember what I did all day. <laughs> I remember I watched like in and out all day, but um, yeah, it wasn't I wasn't like glued to the TV all day or anything. Um, and then when you did, is it just like this moment of celebration and just like oh, your phone blowing up and everything? <laughs> yeah, honestly, I was kind of in shock um especially for it to be the sharks and the team i um loved growing up um to be honest i don't really remember how it went um <laughs> i'm sure it's just a blur right it's yeah, just, yeah yeah really next thing you know it's like three days later and you're like yeah. still feeling it like yep. on cloud nine yeah okay so i mean you mentioned you you grew up watch you know following the sharks at your hometown team like how special was it when it was like you know, Mike, Mike Greer on the phone talking to you. And it's, I know he had just gotten there like literally three days before, but how special was it, like getting that, that phone call from San Jose? Oh, it was unbelievable. Um, that's kind of what you dream of growing up, especially as a kid from San Jose, um, getting a call like that from the, the GM of your favorite team is pretty unbelievable. So, um, you know, and then of course you go to development camp, Right. You, you've been around, you've kind of grown up around solar ice uh, where you kind of like, guys, I know, I know where to go here. I, I you know, I, I know what I'm doing here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It was nice. It was, mm -hmm. it's nice to be comfortable, um, be somewhere that, you know, really well. I mean, I know that place like the back of my hand. I've grown up skating there four or five times a week. So 
um, yeah, it was, it definitely made development camp more comfortable for me. Who did you, uh, who did you room with at development camp? I roomed with Cam Lund. Okay. So how was that? I mean, especially as, as a fellow, you know, uh, he's in college, you're going to be head, heading off to college. How was that kind of another, another draft pick like that? Um, I know he's a second round pick, but what was it like kind of picking his brain? Um, it was cool. It was cool. Um, I mean, we weren't in the room a whole ton, so um, there's not a whole ton of time to get to know each other, but it was cool for the most part, just talking about our paths and um, just development. It's cool. Um, development camp, though, were you kind of, is there anybody where you're like a little starstruck and, you know, it's like, oh, that's so, and that, that's William Eklund or that's who and so and so? Yeah, like those first round guys you know about, like, mm -hmm. you grow up, you watch them, especially being from San Jose, you see those guys, and you're like, wow, that's awesome. Like, those are the next guys um and then you're skating with them it's like wow like this is it's pretty cool pretty cool anybody you were like super impressed with that development camp uh william eckland and Bordelow, pretty good <laughs> pretty unbelievable so skating with those guys was pretty cool yeah um all right guys before we continue with reese uh and we talk about some of his about his flipping his commitment, going to Penn State, why he chose Penn State, um, and playing in Big Ten hockey. I uh, do want to take a quick break, talk to you guys about our friends over at Bird Dogs. If you are looking for a new pair of shorts that are versatile and soft and stretch and make you look good, Bird Dogs is the way to go. They have become a staple in my weekend attire. Um, if you're anything like me, right, you're running, you got kids soccer in the morning, uh, maybe you're running errands, uh, maybe you're at the brewery, maybe you're cooking out, maybe you're at the pool, the lake, whatever it is, Bird Dogs has got you covered for every occasion. Uh, they have anti-stink sweat uh, wicking fabric that lets you keep you cool and dry all day long. They dry super fast too, so if they do get wet, um, they have also have a, a very nice built-in underwear system so you don't worry about chafing and stuff sticking together so if you want to go try them out go to birddogs.com slash locked on nhl enter the promo code locked on nhl and they give you a free yeti style tumbler with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on nhl for a free yeti style tumbler you don't want to take off your bird dogs we promise you so and then you went, you know, you went to start your season in USHL. Um, started with Youngstown in the kind of a slow start, and you know maybe it didn't seem like a good fit. And then you got traded to to Omaha, and, and things really took off from there. Um, what was that trade like? I mean, especially you know being a, a you know seventeen, eighteen year old kid getting traded. You're already far away from home. What's that like? That whole process. Yeah. So the first half, uh, half or so of my year in Youngstown was tough. Um, mm -hmm. It just wasn't a great fit for me. Um, so when I got traded, um, it, I, it was a little bit of a shock at first. Um, but at the same time, I was kind of expecting it, uh, expecting something to come. I didn't ask for a trade, but um, I think it was better for me and the the team I was with at the time just to move on mm -hmm. um, and go somewhere else. And obviously, um, when I got to Omaha, it was a better fit. Um, and it, I mean, it was twice the distance from home in Youngstown. So it was nice to come a little closer to home um, and be in a place. I ended up having a great built family there too, um, a family that I knew before. So um, it was really comfortable and definitely made Omaha great. So what do you think about the fit for Omaha that you really kind of saw your production, you know, increase and kind of found your game for, for Omaha? What do you think was, was the big, the big factor there? Yeah, I think it was just a little bit of a fresh start for me. Honestly, okay. um, as my first year in the league, um, I think the first, few games or however many I played in Youngstown were learning how to play in the league, learning the speed, learning the pace and all that stuff. Um, and when I got to Omaha, it was kind of just a second life. Um, I had a coach there that really believed in me. So he gave me a lot of opportunity um, right out of the gate and, um, you know, it just worked out. My family, my wife's family lives like an hour from Omaha. So I know like the Omaha era area. I've been a couple of times. I'm not like uh, an Omaha expert or anything like that, but yeah. Omaha seems like a, a pretty solid town. I, I, I do have to say so. Yeah. Um, so you, you flipped your commitment. You were supposed to go to Minnesota state and you flipped to Penn state. Uh, what got you so excited about going to, to Penn state? Um, you know, I wasn't uh, initially planning to, decommit from minnesota state and go somewhere else um you guys probably know but all the coaches there left um, and moved on to a different spot so 
um, between a lot of talking with my family and my advisor, um, we decided it'd probably be best just to open the opportunity up to, uh, to see where else I could go, see what mm. other opportunities I'd have. Um, and immediately Penn State jumped in and we're like, we really want you. Um, so it happened really quick. We got a visit out there um, within two weeks of decommitting. Um, and then, you know, the coaches really made me just feel wanted. Um, that's something you want in a college for sure. So, um, it definitely caught my attention and being a big 10 school playing the big, uh, the best country, best conference in the country, um, mm. you know, it was a pretty attractive offer. So I'm uh, super excited to go to Penn state. I mean, those, you, you look at the big 10, like jerseys in, in general right like yeah the michigan ones are like those yellow ones are pretty sweet you got the white uh penn state ones like the ohio state they got some pretty sweet jerseys in the big 10 right oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> but yeah i mean especially those like uh penn state like when they do the white out and stuff i know like in football too right when they do the white out um and i from what i hear happy valley is like an amazing place it's just just to be a college kid so um you know that that sounds exciting so i know you're you know probably going to be there for you know the next four years type of thing so what's your biggest what are you trying to get the most out of of going to penn state um i think just developing my game as a whole um mm -hmm. i gotta i'm trying to put on a little bit of weight right now um just for stability and um strength purposes but i'm just trying to round out my game really focus on the defensive side of the game as well as the offensive production side so um you know i think it's a place where the coach really believes in me and the coach um, is going to allow us to play um, a fun offensive type of hockey. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. So how would you best describe your game? Um, you know, I know you said you want to work on the defensive side and that's every prospect at the, you know, the age of 17, 18, 19 years old. That's, that's always something to need to work on, but how would you kind of describe your game? Um, I would say a two way center, um, can play defense, mm -hmm. um, but also likes to be in on the offense and scoring goals, um, power play, penalty kill, um, like to do it all. So. Who would you kind of say you try to model your game after the most? Um, you know, I used to say Jonathan Taze, but I probably can't say that anymore now that he's retired. But um, yeah, just the way he played was what I really tried to model my game after growing up. Uh, I'm trying to retire also, but yeah, that's not <laughs> coming. In. That's not going to happen anytime soon. So um All right, guys, before we finish up with Reese, uh, we talk about his really amazing in and out but i'm impressed i was impressed when i heard his in and out uh order um do need to take a quick break uh talk to you guys about our friends over at game time if you uh are looking for tickets this summer for whatever events that you could be going to whether it's sports music comedy theater Game time has got you covered. They take all the stress out of it. Um, they have killer last minute deals and their best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped over the fun you'll have. Uh, amazing deal like flash deals on their last minute tickets. Uh, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Images of the seats, right? There's nothing worse than buying tickets and you get there and you realize you have terrible seats. So they're going to make it really easy for you when you order, right? Buy the tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, you're set, and they get sent straight to your uh, phone. So you don't have to worry about digging through your email to find your tickets. Right now, snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, so let's talk about kind of you off the ice. Um, you grew up a big Sharks fan, right? Who was your favorite player growing up? Joe Pavelski, hands down. Um, from the young age, I really just loved him. Um, I actually wore number eight growing up my whole life because of him. So he was for sure my favorite. Uh, it's kind of crazy that he's still doing what he's doing at his age oh, right yeah. now. It's it's literally insane. Just uh, <laughs> just continually just cranking out almost a point per game. Uh, like <laughs> It's just ridiculous. So uh, do you kind of... Pull for the stars a little bit, at least in the playoffs, like pull for yeah. the stars now. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I just not Vegas, right? Anyway, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can't. Uh, we're recording this. I think that Vegas is up to nothing in the series, and I <laughs> might have to just uh, throw my phone into an ocean, the ocean if, if Vegas wins the cup right now. I, I, I can't handle this. No, it's, it's too much. So um, your all time favorite Sharks jersey style. Like which one was 
you know, because you have like um, you have like the old ones with the the stripes across the bottoms. You have like the newer ones. You've got the blackout one. Uh, I actually like the stadium series. I'm one of the weird people who likes mm-hmm. the stadium series jerseys, apparently. Uh, but I mean, the Sharks have not put out a bad one until their their first reverse retro one. I was a little like the gray one. I was like, no, that's not it. But what's your which one's yours? Um. Honestly, I'd probably have to say like the really old ones um, with the old logo. Um, those were pretty sweet. Um, our Junior Sharks jerseys, actually, my 15s and 16s year were pretty similar to those. Mm-hmm. And I really like that logo. Yeah, I liked the uh, like the re- when, like the 25th anniversary when it was like the kind of the same color, like the 30th anniversary was like the same colors and stuff like when they brought those back. Uh, personally, I'm very mad at myself. I never got one. So um, <laughs> what do you think of the Seals jersey, though? the white with the the green and yellow um i liked it i think it's different um it's not something you see anymore but i think it's pretty cool to wear once in a while yeah um i wish eric carlson would have worn the white skates because he's like the only player who's cool enough to do to wear the white skates but uh yeah he he's very eric Eric carlson could pull it off if there's anybody in the world they could pull off it's eric carlson (laughs) so all right um as a california native uh what's your in and out burger go or go to at in and out been eating there a lot lately um you gotta yeah. stock up before you go oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah put on a little weight um no I, I do a three by three with whole grilled onions and then a double double with whole grilled onions and fries so that's really five <laughs> five patties <laughs> oh yeah man. oh man <laughs> well i mean you got to put on the weight right now i understand yep. so um Man, that that's I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I remember when I could eat like that. Uh, nowadays, not so much. So, um, when you're not on the ice or not kind of practicing or working out, what's your kind of what's your favorite uh, activity to do to kind of decompress? Golf for sure. Okay. I like golf. I try to get out as much as I can during the summer. So, uh, I mean, how good are you? That's I think that's the next question. Depends on the day. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I'm half decent. Sometimes I'm awful. But that's how it is that's good that's fine i mean I, i've noticed like every every hockey player that's their like go-to thing is to play golf uh, yeah so um all right before games are you a, a superstitious guy a little stitious guy or you kind of a let it flow type of guy let it flow um i'm not too superstitious i mean usually i'll try to take like a nap before a little nap but um no i'm not too superstitious are you a music guy? Are you like headphones guy? Or are you whatever the DJ is playing? Um, whatever the DJ is playing. Are you the DJ? No, I am not. The <laughs> I am not the DJ. <laughs> that always feels like it's it's a very re- important and underrated responsibility in, in the locker room. And I, for I personally, for one, would not want to be the DJ because I feel like uh, people probably wouldn't like my music choices. <laughs> and yeah, I'm like early 20 like 2000s like emo guy like music and i don't think that would go very well in the locker room (laughs) so uh you i mean is there anything where you're like okay like this guy's got like what what if you were to be the dj what are you going with i don't even know i'm terrible with song names and that stuff so it's probably a better thing i'm not that guy (laughs) i totally understand that so um again before game are you a coffee guy absolutely uh, iced or hot either either, either. Okay. Depends on the weather depends on the weather. uh i know i'm weird i have hot coffee for me I, it's 110 out i'll drink hot coffee i'm yeah i don't know but um that's yeah kind of a weird i don't know people are just iced coffee tastes bad to me fight me about it guys um all right last question um are you a monster who doesn't wear socks with their skates um or are you a socks and skates guy no chance i have to wear socks there's yeah. always one right in a locker room right <laughs> And they it's it's terrible. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how those guys do it. So, um, Reese, thank you so much. Uh, good luck in, in Penn State. We're really excited to see you. Um, you're gonna, I assume you're going to be at development camp this year in a couple of weeks. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So, yeah, um, you'll get to you know, you'll be the uh, grizzled veteran of uh, one full year. So when all the new the, the the fresh guys come in, you can show them around and, you know, at least introduce all the all the the especially like the European guys to in and out Burger and tell them, yeah, this is the order to get. So that yeah, way can sure. help for get sure. some weight. So um, Reese, good luck. We'll we'll continue to, to watch your progress and uh, best of luck this season. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Reese LeBach. It's really cool seeing a, a San Jose native, a Sharks fan, getting drafted by the Sharks and hopefully getting to play with the Sharks at, at some point. So going to spend the next couple of years in college. Um, very, you know, but I, I think he's got a chance to kind of, you know, continue to develop and, you know, potentially uh, play for the Sharks in the future. So, um, again, just super cool to start to see this this Sharks you know, you're starting to see the, pro the the prospect pool from San Jose continue to grow, right? You had Dustin Wolf, um, you know, from Gilroy. Like, you're starting to see Bay Area hockey start to make its influence um, around the league here. And I think, you know, Reese is just going to be kind of one of those beginning guys of hopefully what will, will start to be uh, more and more players coming out of the Bay Area. So, um I know I speak for basically every Sharks fans where you're rooting for him and you're hoping this guy can, you know, be a, a contributor for the Sharks in the future. So um, thank you guys for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Um, again, if you guys want to be a, an everyday or just follow along or subscribe wherever you get podcasts, uh, we have plenty of more draft profiles, profiles coming up. I'm going to talk to some bigger draft stuff next week. Maybe uh, maybe some big boards, uh, potential forwards, and my, my big boards of defensemen that I would take. Um, so plenty of good stuff coming next week at Lockdown Sharks. Make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can subscribe on YouTube as well. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Lockdown Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at MyFryHole. And until Monday, bye, friends.